Hello YouTube, this is Diesel Don here. I'm here to talk to you about these Chinese diesel generators we got here. You see them all over the place. Well, not quite all over the place. They never gained a lot of popularity over here in the United States. But you come across them from time to time. Um, they're wattage ranging from 5,000 watts all the way to 65 to 7,000 watts, depending on which model you get. But there's not a whole lot of information on them. Um, the one I got here, it's an Apache brand. Um, it says an 8500S. Don't let it fool you. It's actually a 6500 watt generator. Electric start, remote start, 110, 220, um, silent diesel. And I bought this one. I, I got a really good deal on it. My old boy said it started, it just needed a new battery. Of course, you know how that goes. Ended up having a uh, broken tappet and uh, ate the camshaft up. And then when the tappet broke, it actually put a hole in the engine whenever it came apart. So I tore it all down and got to do a lot of digging on these things. Um, what parts were available for them? Uh, what engines on there? They're, they're actually a clone of a Yanmar L100 series diesel engine. A 10 horsepower diesel engine. And um, I think the Chinese designation is a 186F. Um, I think Coop makes a engine by that brand. Um, there's a couple other manufacturers, but they're all the same engine. Probably all come from the same manufacturer, and then everybody and their brother just slaps their names on it. Um, and then they ship them over here to the United States in all kinds of different colors. Um, I'm assuming they're popular over Europe too, I don't know. But I think Apache, they, they don't sell the Apache brand anymore. There's Duro Star makes a silent diesel generator. Aurora makes a silent diesel generator. They're all the same. The, the cases and the covers are a little different. But inside, they're all the same. Um, maybe the generator head may be a little bit different. Some may be just a slightly bit smaller. This one's a 6,500 surge watt, 6,000 watt running. Um... But anyway, um, I've seen some people say that Generator Guru has parts for these. They do, don't get me wrong, but they're sky high. Um, type in Yanmar L100 in Amazon or eBay, and you can find injection pumps for them, injectors, um, complete engine kits. I mean, you can find anything you want for these things. Anything off of a Yanmar engine bolts right onto these. And I have the test of that. <laughs> The, uh, all the parts I used were actually Yanmar parts. Or at least it said that it was supposed to be Yanmar parts. Um, I changed the injection pump. I changed the camshaft. The camshaft is actually a Yanmar camshaft. Bolts right onto that. I've replaced the uh, recoil pull cord because originally it's just pure electric start. I actually put a manual pull cord on it. That's the pull cord you can see down there on the bottom right side of the, the housing. Um, they Awesome little engines. Simple as can be. Parts are cheap for them. I know people give them a bad rap. You know, Chinese diesel knockoffs, but they're, they're not a bad engine. Now, don't get me wrong, the quality isn't as good as the Yanmar on assembly and stuff, but if you go back into it and, you know, fix the problems that have been had, they're a pretty reliable engine. I've had good luck with this one. Um, about the worst thing, or the most expensive thing that I've had to do to it was I had to change the starter out on it. The starter that was on it finally gave up on me. And that was about 70, 80 bucks for just the starter. But, uh, anyway, I'll give you a, give you a little bit of a walk around and, and I'll answer any of your guys' questions there in the comments on these little engines or little gensets. Um, they, it's about a three, a little over a three gallon tank on it and it's supposed to run 12 hours on three gallons which it's about right I've ran this thing quite a few hours since I've rebuilt it um, there on my uh, my camper because we're actually doing some work inside our camper at the moment and since my camper isn't close enough to the house I actually have to run it off the generator so we can get AC because it's in the middle of Missouri summer and it's it's hot it's hot but uh, anyway I'll give you guys a walk around I'll uh, show you how everything works on it I'll show you some modifications I did to it that I think are necessary um, 
and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know what I think of it. But anyway, this is your control panel. Um, there's a couple different variations of the control panel. This one does not have the hour meter on it. Um, and it doesn't have a digital voltmeter, which this is an older one. I think this is from 2010. But you've got your, you've got your 120 and 244 pin plug. You've got your 30 amp 3 pin 110 plug. And you've got two 20 amp 110 plugs. Um, your breakers, low oil lamp, power light. This is your breaker over here. And then you've got your uh, leads for your 12 volt. You can like jump start a truck or anything with like that. Here's your fuse for that. And then down here, you open that door, and you've got your battery, and then you've got your shutoff. That shuts your fuel off to your injection pump, like an emergency shutoff, and then that turns it back on. Right here is your governor assembly. This is actually your fuel filter. Now this ain't a factory fuel filter assembly. I actually bought this one. It did just have like an inline fuel filter. I put a factory water separator. Uh, not not a factory, but I put a water separator on it with a spin-on filter. A lot easier to change, a lot better filtration system. I think it cost me I think 20 bucks. Sorry about that. Um, put a brand new battery in it. That's a new battery from Walmart. 275 cone cracking amps. It turns the engine fairly well. I, I don't see no need to have anything bigger than that. Um, right down here is your oil. Um, to check your oil with the engine off after you let it set for a while, you unscrew this out. You wipe it off. And then when you stick it back in, you put it in there, you don't screw it in, and you pull it right back out and check it again. Um, some people screw them back in and they'll actually give you a false rating. So you're just supposed to unscrew it, dip your stick back in, don't screw it back in, pull it back out. And that gives you a good reading on your oil level. It takes about, about a quart and a half, I think it's one quart, 0.6. So 1.6 quarts of a... Uh, I put 1540 in it. I think the book calls for 1030 diesel oil, um, but I, I put 1540 in everything, and it, it, it seems to like it just fine. I may change to a 1030 whenever it gets winter, and then <clears throat> the decompress. This one, a lot, a lot of these engines have a decompression lever, which this one actually has, but the decompression lever is supposed to be right here supposed to be a hatch come up so you can get down there to your decompression lever this one does not have one that may be something I may cut a hole in the top and put a like a, uh, a door on there that I could get to the decompression lever as of now I've never needed the decompression lever unless I took the fuel system apart and put it back together and then I I'd, I'd use the decompression lever to make the engine spin over faster to bleed the air out of the lines that may be something I do in the future and then I haven't been through with this generator in cold weather yet. I'm fixing to find that out this winter. See how it starts and runs. Because it actually it doesn't have any starting aid. There's no glow plug. There's no grid heater. We need to add one, but as of now it doesn't have one. So we'll, we'll see how that starts this winter. I'll give you guys another video this winter on how it does in the colder weather. And then back here, there's another little hatch. You take that hatch apart. And that gives you access to your starter. And it also, on my generator, I ran the capacitor because it has a capacitor instead of an AVR voltage regulator. And uh, I actually extended the wires over here so I could change the capacitor out through this hatch. Without, If I didn't do that, I would have to take the muffler off and this whole side panel off just to get to the capacitor. And if anybody else has one of these generators, I definitely recommend running some longer wires and moving your capacitor over to this side where you can get to it. Makes things way easier because you know how capacitors are. Sometimes you get good ones and sometimes you get, get bad ones. And nothing's worse than having a bad capacitor in the middle of nowhere, only having a 10 millimeter wrench and not being able to change it.
with this one you can get a 10 millimeter wrench and change anything you need um, here I'll give you a start up my shoddy camera work here sorry about that guys here's our start up a little different than your, your guys's your guys's you just turn the switch off and it shuts the shuts the generator off well mine I don't like electronics too much um, on the injection pump it actually has a fuel shut off solenoid with the electronic so that way you can remote start it remote turn it off start it with the key turn it off with the key and then actually if your low oil light comes on it'll actually shut off your injection pump which is a good safety feature. Um, but I actually put an injection pump on that had, does not have a fuel shut off solenoid. So to start and run mine, I have to shut it off right down here. That's how I shut mine off. And then I switch it back to run and then use the key to start it again. So I like it that way because if that solenoid ever goes bad, I can still start and run my generator. Now I've got another injection pump over there with the solenoid on. I'm debating on putting it back on just so my low oil shutdown would actually work properly. But as of now, I've not used a drop of oil and I've probably ran almost 100 hours on this thing. You know, with oil changes and such. Um, but I, I like a mechanical injection pump and I can, that's fine for me to, to open up the case and shut it off. I mean, that doesn't bother me none. So. But anyway, that is my review on the Apache silent diesel generator and Aurora and the Durostar. They're, they're all the same engine. Um, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks, guys.